Joey, today's podcast is all about what not to do when trying to save taxes. What do you think the one thing that we didn't cover in this episode that someone should absolutely be listening to of things that I should not do when trying to save taxes? Well, if if this was a TV show and it was a list of things, this would be at the top of the list, right? Family Feud style. You know what I'm talking about? You, you yeah. Watching it, t- top five items. We asked a hundred people. Yeah. This is the biggest one with the, like the big dollars and everybody screams when you get it right. Quit put money into 401ks. Qualified Stop plans. it. Yeah. Qualified plans of any sort do not save taxes. What do they do? They only kick the can down the road. They defer taxes to a later date, which with an unknown calculation. I, I used to listen to a guy said all the time, qualified plans do two things. They defer taxes and they defer the tax calculation of what it is going to be. I agree 100% that investing money inside of your company's 401k as a way to solely save taxes, which I have heard that from many high earners that get that from their CPAs. You're making $500,000, $600,000, $700,000. You should be putting as much money into your 401k, even if you are the company, because you're going to reduce your taxable income this year. Well, that's a partial truth. You do reduce your taxable income that year. There are so many better strategies that are available. We talk about some of those things, not from, hey, here's what you should do, right? Because one of the things you you should not do is listen to a podcast as the sole strategy of how to save taxes. You need to apply everything to your situation. Listen to tax professionals. Listen to tax strategists, which we are not. But exactly. we do watch, observe, and have paid tens of not hundreds of thousands of dollars to tax professionals to help us reduce our tax taxable income as much as possible while multiplying our net income as the years have gone by. This is a great topic. Can't wait for you to hear it. Let's jump in right now. Let's pull a ta- our chair up to the table, Joey, and belly, belly up. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them, and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Grateful to have you in the room. I'm Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy, mostly because lack of follow-through guy just didn't sound that good to me. But enough about me. Let me talk to my partner, the man I like to refer to as the Italian stallion because he's got the license plate cover to prove it, Mr. Joey Murray. Stallion, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Glad to be here, Dr. Morgan. Doctor? Man, if I was a doctor, what would I be a doctor of? Proctologist? <laughs> I'm just, just first thing that came to my mind. I don't know. You're full of so many things, and uh, it could be could be a bunch of them, but that, that's what I'm going with. I, I thought you were going to say, because of how impatient I am when I'm driving, I could be that close to be looking at people's butts. Either, you know, I'll go either way on that. All right. Well, hey, look, th- thankfully, though, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about what not to do when trying to save taxes. I'm First go to why is this topic so important? By the way, great idea. Try to save money on taxes. Good point for us to be covering today because there's a lot of things people just do because they think they're going to save taxes and it just turns into just messed up situation, right? We're, we're going to have to go through this. I don't want to be the ones that, to hog all the time, though, Russ. We need to get our, our coaches in the, in the mix here. Yeah, I, I'm going to say what not to do when trying to save tax is listening to you and I. Exactly. Because <laughs> we are not the first CPA. tip. That is tip number one. We're not CPAs or tax advisors. 
But as you said, we do have the dream team of financial coaches. I'm excited to hear what they've been learning, what they've been observing, what they've seen, what not to do. And hopefully that's going to come out of the podcast. So to my left, I got Mr. Incredible. His superpower is speed to financial freedom. That real beauty to that speed is it's contagious. My man, J.D. Hill. Say hello to your fans, J.D. Hey, fans. Uh, I'm beginning to think that you're my only fan, Russ, but I'm so grateful, uh, even if I do just have one. Uh, how are you? Not true. I cannot wait till next week when we were in Austin, Texas, and we were oh, around yeah. 50 of the, the most excitable people, people who are looking to become financially free in our passive income mastermind retreat. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how many are asking for your autograph. Like, hey, can, can, I, get, can I get your, you know, your, your signature here? Listen, if nobody does, I need one of y'all to at least ask just so I can say one person asks, right? Because you don't want to set me up for failure. <laughs> I got Dude, you. Dude, I will, I will absolutely get your autograph. Um, and it's two Russ Morgan. That's two S's. Okay. And Perfect. you just picked a dollar amount you're going to write on the check. I don't care. Oh, <laughs> oh, that <laughs> autograph. Right. No, that's good. I like that. I like that. No, I, I'm actually that? really excited about uh, this topic today, Russell. Why do you think it's so important for us to be covering what not to do when trying to save taxes? Yeah, I think it's always important because I, I think oftentimes people don't understand how taxes work. I read a really great quote. It said, the tax law is the best roadmap to wealth ever devised. And I think that's so true. It's, it's, it is a treasure map on what to do with your money. It's just keep more of what you make. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't understand how the rules of the game are played, you're never, like, you, you can't win. The rules are so important, right? I was sitting with my 16-year-old daughter coming back from breakfast this, this Wednesday, and we were talking about different stuff. And I stopped by my favorite juice place, Clean Juice, and I, I was taking a picture of the receipt on my phone and the QuickBooks app. And she said, why are you doing that? And I was explaining to her how you, know, you can actually have your company pay for things and bring it back so the employee is more efficient, more productive when working in the house. And I was explaining to her how that works and how I'm an employee of my marketing company and my marketing company knows that I work so much better when I can just have my juice and stuff at my desk, right? I mean, and she's like, huh. And then, so I went through the process. I said, if, you know, let's imagine you make $500 in a day and you had to pay 40% taxes. Her first response was 40%? <laughs> they get to keep that much money? I was like, well, if you don't do it the right way, they do. And so we went through the whole process. I'll maybe come back to that in a second, but I, I don't want to miss out for the opportunity to get to the man on the right. The man I like to refer to as the true financial Sherlock Holmes of our day. No problem too difficult to solve. If I would have only known him earlier, I would have been so much richer. Says everybody, Mr. Downtown Ernie Brown. Nice to see you, Ern. Man, nice to be seen. Grateful to be here. Tell me, what do you think? is so important about what not to do when trying to save taxes? Well, as I thought about this and in, in my conversations, it has occurred to me there's, there's really two responses about this. Is number one, uh, the person who's in total dependence of their CPA mm. to tell them what their tax liability is. And by the way, that person is the one who sa always says, I just wrote a check to the IRS and it was so much more than I thought it was going to be. And the second person is the one who is actively engaged in their business and in their planning that they know exactly what they're going to pay the IRS. And their goal is to make it as little as possible. You, you know, Erm, I love what you're saying there is like there, there's a mindset around taxes and paying taxes and how, how all of this works. I, I love talking to someone around tax day or the month or two after, and someone says, oh, man, you know, I'm just so excited to get my tax refund back. And I'm like, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. <laughs> just watching them be like, what, what, but, but what do you mean about that? And I was like, man, I'm so sorry that you guys couldn't do enough planning that, that you had to give money to the government for free for that long. That's crazy. Do you, do you need like do you need a recommendation to someone else that could help you with that? Because I'll be honest, I'm like oh for a hundred on getting any reaction when I tell them <laughs> that I'm sorry to hear that, just because they can't imagine another world. <laughs> so just being honest. Oh, uh, 
All right. Well, let, let, let's get on to the retiree of the group. Mr. Catch me if you can. When he's not killing bears with his bare hands or spear diving for tuna, he's driving gold nuggets right here. The one and only Mr. Mark Carguchi. Welcome, Mark. Afternoon, everybody. This is a very poignant topic. I mean, granted, it's it, it's past tax day, but if you filed an extension, your tax day is still coming around the corner. Yeah, it, it's very few people that are true entrepreneurs that uh, April 15th really means anything. That's just the date that you got to make sure your CPA filed your extension by. That's that's about it. Exactly. Exactly. So for me, the, the, the importance of this is, yeah, I, I've heard it said, I can't remember who said it, but you know, taxes are probably the single largest expense you're going to have in your life and you know what not to do when trying to save for taxes. A lot of people are playing defense as opposed to playing offense. You know, you, you, you mentioned that, you know, hearing people say, Oh, wow, I got a refund, man. I'm so sorry to hear that. The one that I hear a lot is people saying, Oh no. Yeah. I, I actually need to make less money this year. So I don't pay more in taxes. And I say, wow, that's, um, tell me about that. That hurts my heart to hear that Mark. <laughs> Like that is just unbelievable. Because there is this fundamental misunderstanding of, of, of how this whole system really works. And so a lot of people think, oh, well, if I make, if I make, you know, this, this extra money here, I'm just going to have to pay it all in taxes. Cause you know, it's, it's just going to ruin. I'm like, I don't think you really know how this, how, how this thing works here. Let's, let's have a conversation. It, they don't know how it works, right? I mean, it, taxes are the scary thing, and we'd just be better off just sticking our head in the sand and, you know, like the boogie monster and just not willing to look underneath the bed just to ensure that he's not there kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And and it, there was a time, though. There was a time where the, it actually was a better strategy not to make another dollar. One of our former presidents, Ronald Reagan, you know, the story goes that he would do a couple of, movies per year because the amount of money he made per movie um, equaled roughly in today's dollars about two million and at that time the government was taking like 92 cents at every dollar someone made once they went over that income threshold so if he would go and do a third movie in essence would only get to keep like eight cents on the dollar and he was like, that's not worth my time. So I wasn't going to do it. But that's not the, the case today. And I think the other part that people don't understand about taxes is that money that comes in our pocket, cash, doesn't necessarily have to be income, does it? It doesn't have to be treated as income. And I'm not meaning like you're getting paid underneath the table. I mean that you're using the tax code in a way that where you're able to invest in projects and transactions. So going back to the story with my daughter, I'm going through the cash flow quadrant with her. I'm showing her the E quadrant. I'm showing her the S quadrant, the B quadrant, the I quadrant. And I write down the I quadrant can actually pay zero in taxes. And she says, how's that possible? I was like, there's actually things you can invest in where you can write off and deduct different things the government wants you to invest in that will actually make your tax taxable income zero, but yet you have all the money from it. And she goes, well, why wouldn't everybody do that? <laughs> right. So today I think wisdom. there's a couple that's, of that's pure wisdom right there. That right. Question. I mean, well, one, if they come up with their own, their own, it's a lot better than if they're hearing it from their dad and, and showing the visualization of that tax, that cash flow quadrant is helpful for them to see, well, which side of it do you want to be on? One, the people on the left are trading time for money. The people on the right are paying less in taxes than the ones that are trading time for money. And that always becomes a helpful motivation for us all. If I would have only heard that a long time ago, I would have been so much richer too bad. You didn't tell me that earned. All right, let's talk about what's important from today's conversation. What can we derive out of it? Maybe three big points for us is we need to get professional help. And I don't mean the kind that Joey needs that we need to, we need to build a plan and stick to a plan. And three, we need to manage and evaluate tax brackets in ways to see how we can stay in lower tax brackets through creative strategies. Is that fair? Would you guys say that's three good points? We'd cover those. We have good podcasts. I'd say they're good those, enough for us. I think those are um, amazing yeah. points. And whoever came up with those should probably get a gold star for the day. Man, you're going to get a gold star. I'll give it to you next week. Let's talk about professional help. What, what should somebody be looking for 
in a tax professional? Who is a tax professional that they should be seeking out and what defines a good one in your eyes, JD? Man, that's a big question. Um, so I think that there's, there's, there's two different perspectives, right? Most people will go towards a turbo tax or something like that and kind of file their taxes on their own. If they're a W2 type employee, uh, I even know some solo entrepreneurs, um, you know, sole prop, sole, sole proprietors that, that'll go that route. Uh, or you can, you know, hire uh, a CPA. Um, and, and what I'll tell you is that whether it's a CPA or whether it's one of those tax planning services from my experience, so this isn't necessarily blanket, but those are all historical ways to file taxes. And what I mean is that you have already made financial decisions and now you are reconciling those financial decisions, right? So everything is in the history that you're now reconciling and putting it down on paper. So there's no strategy involved in that. On the other side, you have tax planning attorneys. Now, because of my experience with Wealth Without Wall Street and the things that we teach, I have been introduced to this style of planning, which is proactive. It's not reactive. It's understanding the tax law and what it says and helping you develop a plan that's proactive to avoid and mitigate taxes rather than being reactive. So I think there's two ways to do that. You can be either reactive or proactive. So you're saying what would make a, a, a good trait in a tax professional when you're talking to them is that that person is being proactive in their approach to, to tax strategy as compared to reactive. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So before you make a, a financial decision, you're not making it absent of context, right? You're, you're making it in light of the plan that's already been established because you know, if I do this, it's going to trigger this. If I do this, it's going to trigger this. Or most people just don't know. They have a general idea where, um, you know, like, can I write off my dry cleaning? Most people think you can. It's kind of a gray area. It really just depends on, you know, the, and I've, <laughs> I'm going to stop there, but, um, <laughs> cause I'm not saying I have or haven't written off my dry cleaning, but my point is, is like, there's things like that where you think you can, whether you like, so, so having somebody that's proactive and helping you figure out what's, what you can or can't do is so much more valuable than you making decisions that now you can't go back retroactively and change. Look, dude, you're not going to get audited for dry cleaning your your white t-shirt there, bro. Nobody's going to take you seriously on that. They're going to be like, there's no way. That must be a miscategorization of another uh, item. All right, Mark, I, what's, your, what's your take on this? My take is Tommy Boy had the, the, the most poignant line, which is, I'm going to have to change a few words in here for the for the for the PG rating, but you can get a good look at a T-bone steak by sticking your head up a cow's rear, but I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. So, like, so to JD's point, you can go out and try and <laughs> read these books, try and TurboTax your way to glory, you know, and and try and get creative on your own. Or would you rather just go ask the butcher, hey, you know, why don't you kind of help me out here? Let you know, seek professional help, leverage someone else's experience because. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm not going to sit there and read like the 3000 some odd pages of the tax code. Um, the other thing that I want to really throw in here is to, to, to JD's point and you mentioned earlier is, you know, are you playing offense or defense? You need to be asking whoever is doing your taxes questions and you need to be engaging them and letting them know what you're doing and what you're trying to do. Because the default for a lot of people is, is, is to going to be, well, if he didn't ask a question, I'm not going to provide an answer. And so you may be going through thinking that what you have set up is working just fine. And the person on the other end may just be, you know, filling in the boxes for you. And they, they may be a very good person and, and a good professional. But if you don't tell them, hey, I, I need some strategy here. I need some help. Is this structure benefiting me the most for what it is I'm trying to do? Well, if you're not engaging them, they can't help you. I just read this comment. It was so drawing joy. I wanted to share it. I realize that my time is not really mine. It's my company's. Now I have to stop negotiating my time for money and I need to start working to become financially free. That's exactly how I felt when my daughter Adler asked me on the way to school, dad, can you pick me up from school today? And I had to say, no, baby, I have to go to work. That's where I drew the line. In order for you to be clear on the things you need to do and stop doing and to know who you need to become so that you can stop trading time for money, join us right now at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport.
Now let's get back to this episode. Joey, do you feel like sometimes we make the mistake of putting the pressure on the CPA when it comes oh, to this? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I, don't, I think this is the default that we've actually been, we've been told like you just need a really good accountant to save on taxes. And to JD's point, they're not built that way. Like we're asking somebody to operate in a way that they're not built. They, they are good at documenting what you've, what you've already done. And, and I think that was an aha moment, I think, for you and I, Russ, you know, a number of years back when we met the guys at CPS that have helped us personally with this process, is they started to point out the things that are in the tax code that we could utilize to, that was always there but just never had somebody proactively looking at it and applying it to our business or to our lives in whatever way that would be possible. So you, you gotta like, don't, don't sit there and expect the CPA, even as good as our CPA is, he was never going to bring these ideas to us um, because it was never a part of his practice. It's not what he does. All right. So, so recapping here and the first set of what not to do when trying to save taxes is that we, we should not be reactive in our tax approach, right? We, we should be not expecting our CPAs to be the Holy grail of all information, right? Exactly. Because that's not the job that they hold. They're really just to tell you how much you owe, right? Exactly tax strategists are the ones who are seeking and looking forward, not backwards. And I think that that's a good point there. Uh, Earn fr from your perspective, as it relates to this, what, what do you think is something that someone should avoid when seeking professional help? What's the question that, that they're, that they should be asking? What's the thing that they should be doing? Well, oh. We've said a lot of the a lot of the same thing, and not to beat the the dead horse a little more, but uh, so, so I'll say it this way. Yesterday I was driving, uh, had a long drive, and I was listening to the radio, and I heard the song that I didn't really like, but one of the lyrics said, "And I'm just trying to keep my wife from figuring out that I married up, and she married way way down." That's kind of a catchy line, and I kind of <laughs> I don't really like the song just on the record. But I think the, the question to be asking is, am I out of their league or are they out of my league? And you want to mm. sort of pair your planning to your situation. And so one of the great questions for the CPA and or the tax professional is, is the main line of business that you're helping like me or different? Or what type of person are you able to help the best and align yourself with that person? What what a great point, because if you're a real estate investor, right, you should know if the CPA that's helping you is also helping lots of other real estate investors. Because here's the thing that I've found is that they're observant, right? You find a group who they, they have a, a tax strategist they're working with, right? And they're using their CPA, this CPA, your CPA, to do all the books and your CPA is seeing all the creative things that this individual is doing. And if they're in a like-minded business, they're going to go, huh, I bet you Ernie, because he does the same sort of thing could benefit from this. Why don't I tell him about these things? But if, if they're not dealing with people like you, there's no other person for them to learn from except from what you're doing. And, the, you know, anybody else that comes along, they're going to get the benefit of your work as compared to you leveling up. I love that. That's a, that's a great point there. By the and way, so, just, I don't want to move on from this. That also means that there's going to be seasons where the person that you're working with is not the person you should be working with. You've kind of grown past where they were. And it's not, it's not easy. It's a little bit difficult, especially if you built relationships with people, but also know that there are times when you need to level up and, and it's kind of part of the natural um, progress that we're all on. Well, I mean, so I, I'm going to let you, you 
you, you brought that up there, Joey. And the second point we had in here was, you know, what not to do in trying to save taxes, I would imagine is not having a plan, <laughs> you know, so the opposite of that is sticking to a plan. And how, how do you avoid sticking to a plan that was maybe created initially before you were there? So you just said being willing to, to move from the CPA that you're with, but that seems contrary to this point of sticking to the plan. So you, you and Mark battle that one out. I'm, I'm interested to see your, your, your thought process there. Well, I, I think, I don't know if this is going to be a, a battle thing. The first thing I wanted to point out about this is that you don't abdicate this to any one person, right? Like, I think this is a common theme with Wealth Without Wall Street is you don't just give up money to somebody else and hope that it works out. The same is true, even though it seems like a it could be a little overwhelming, like to understand your tax plan, it sounds like seems like this is way above your pay grade and your your experience. But I would say you have to educate yourself on something so important as it relates to taxes. You can no longer just push that off and say, well, I mean, I have a good CPA. I, I assume he's doing a good job. Heck no, you've got to be, you've got to be putting a plan together. And that means you have to understand what's in that plan. Um, but I would say, and Mark, you can, you can come back at me however you like, but I'd say your plan is as far as you can go. And then when you realize that the person that's helping you look with that uh, from a professional standpoint is no longer able to assist you beyond where you're at, that's when you would shift to a different professional. That's so it's sticking to your plan and that's part of it. What do you say? So glad you asked. Thank you, Joey. Um, when, when Russ said he was going to let us battle it out, I, I was expecting we were going to throw some cardboard down on the ground and, and do like, like some break dance battling or something like that. But yes. Dance battle. All yeah. Time. No, my thought on this is stick to your plan. Don't let the tax tail wag the dog right? You are supposed to have a plan. You should be having a vision of what your future is supposed to look like, what you want it to look like. Is that going to change? Yeah, there's going to be facets that are going to change, right? You know, if, if you're making a decision right now as, as a single individual, well, your goal of financial freedom is going to be a little bit different if you then get married, if you then have a family. Th those things are going to change. New ideas are going to come up. Were you guys talking about doing short-term rentals five years ago? No. No. So sticking to your plan is sticking to your original goal of driving towards financial freedom. You're going to have to make pivots along the way. If that means you've outgrown your, your current, you know, CPA or, or tax professional, you know, maybe you're now in an area that isn't their, their, their cup of tea. Um, the, the first CPA I had, uh, he was great. But once I started moving outside of the state of Hawaii, you know, adding Tennessee, adding Illinois, it started becoming more complex than he was comfortable doing. So that meant I had to pivot and shift. But I'm, I'm not letting taxes be the only thing that drives how I build my wealth. I have a goal of what I want my, my financial you know, future to look like what, what that vision of freedom is. And I'm going to add pieces in along the way that help me get there, but I don't have to know what those are right now. Just know the destination and be ready to pivot as, as you move through life. JD, what sort of adjustments have you made to your plan, not sticking to one specific thing that's really helped you in this, in this arena? Uh, two things. One is um, I am frugal. And so historically I've actually tried to save money when hiring a professional in this space. And I will tell you that that is um, generally probably not a great idea. Um, people that are worth um, um, helping you um, in this space are worth paying them to do that. And, uh, and so when you engage with people that are really, really good in this space, it's going to cost money and you can't not want to pay that because it seems expensive, right? So you got to put it in context to the overall bigger picture. Uh, the second thing to that is don't neglect uh, bookkeeping. That is something that I think is so wildly undervalued and underutilized is bookkeeping. So one, don't be cheap. And then two is uh, don't neglect the bookkeeping. Those are things that for me, like I've evolved over time on, 
uh, especially watching you because you love to just like spend money. And I'm like, man, what is this Russ guy doing? Because he's spending money and um, but he's saving money. So we got to figure it out. So I'm just, you know, I'm just following in your footsteps. Uh, hey, not being frugal. <laughs> that's something that nobody's ever said. Hey, Russ is frugal. <laughs> that is, does not exist. Now, my my partner over here, right? Like, I mean, he saves money by by getting a five dollar haircut and not shaving. Like, that's that's his his strategy. But I, I agree. Great that, clips, okay. Go to great clips. What not to do for personal hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> finding great people though costs money how much money jd have you been able to save in taxes by being willing to pay for those services it's this year it's it's going to be exponential um like a lot <laughs> uh relative to what I, I was on pace to pay and then when we look at the plan and and that's the cool thing too. When you work with someone that's proactive, I get to actually look at the plan that when I make these financial decisions, I get to see the bottom line number of how much I'm going to save in taxes relative to if I didn't do the plan, how much I would have paid in taxes. And I get to compare those two things. So then when it comes to then the fee that I have to pay that person, Oh dude, they saved me like hundreds of thousands of dollars that I would have paid in taxes that I'm actually not going to have to pay. So paying them was so worth it. Oh man. Hey, uh, you know, I think one thing that is not a point, but is a point is don't take advice on a podcast or go to a seminar and try to apply that to save money in taxes, right? Like don't, don't, don't just use blanket statements and information and, and assume it applies to you. We have an investor DNA earn, right? That we have everybody go through this assessment to understand who they are as an investor so that they can then choose opportunities that more align with who they are and who their investor DNA is. I think the same thing should be true with anything that has to do with taxes. So in, in your process, right, you're still early in that journey. You're, you're, you're moving out of that E quadrant into the S quadrant, looking for and starting to become an investor in things. How have you been able to make strides in the tax space by not sticking to the exact same plan that you had when you were an equator person? That's a, a good question. The, the thing that comes to mind, you talk about the investor profile. Mine is a C. I, 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 want to, I want to work in the things that I feel really confident in, right? So this, this point of sticking to the plan, that's what I want to do. <laughs> I don't want to push out in boundaries and and do something that I've never experienced before. So one thing that's helped me is, is just following a proven process. What, what has been done, what's possible and getting the right help. And, and so just partnering with a great CPA who can help on that front. Uh, but then also just in my own way, I want to work really hard on the tax strategy side of things because there, there's really clear rules to that game and so to help me move forward in the investment space is I've got to make a conscious decision to focus on the investments and the assets. I understand the tax advantages of all the things, of all those things. And to be honest, it's not that difficult, that space. But finding the right thing, I have to, I have to sort of force myself to focus on growing on the, on the investment side of things. That's, that's just me. All right, let, let's get to the last point here, which was, I think, Mark, you were saying this at the beginning, that we should not try to find ways to make less money in order to get us in a lower tax bracket, right? So if we're going to focus in this and in the saving taxes, but also at the same time, what not to do, what would you highlight for people? What are some key takeaways? I think a lot of people need to know that at the end of the year, you're going to see what your effective tax rate is. And, and, and that's just going to be like a number. But the, what you need to know is as you're making money throughout the year, you're moving into different buckets. So let, let's, let, let's just come up with some fictitious numbers. You know, that from zero to 25 grand, let's say it's, it's a 5% tax bracket. And then from the money you make from 25 grand up to 50 grand is now going to be taxed at 10%. And the money you make from 50 to 100 is going to be taxed at, say, 20%. So what a, what a lot of people, I think, just unfortunately get, get confused on is 
They say, oh, well, if I make more money, I'm, I'm going to pay more in tax. Well, you conceivably are going to pay more in tax on that amount that you just made that falls into the higher category. But that's not going to tr- that's not going to trickle down to everything below it. It's not like if you move into the 20 percent bracket. Now, everything is going to be taxed at 20. So I've heard people say, oh, no, I, I, I can't I can't work anymore. And I, I don't want to do any more because it's going to push me into a higher bracket. Well, that's only for that amount. And if, if we go back to what we've just talked about, right, seek professional help, tell them what your plan is and put that plan in place, that's going to allow you to continue to generate dollars, but be able to shelter them because it, ultimately it's not how much you make, it's how much you can keep. And if you're smart enough to know how to keep it all, you know, feel free to share um, and, and let the rest of us know. But for, for the rest of us that aren't that smart, we actually go and we trade our treasure for someone else's, you know, information so that they can help us so that we can recapture those dollars. Yeah. I got, so, I got two things to follow up what Mark just said. Number one, if you fear going into the next tax bracket, that's an indication you're working with the wrong professional. That should be, there should be no fear of, Oh my goodness, this is going to make me too much money. And I'm going to end up having to pay more in taxes. No, that is just more opportunity for the person that you have hired to help you in those situations to perform. (laughs) And that's the, so that should immediately tell you, I have a problem I need to solve. I'm with the wrong place. I don't have confidence in the tax professional or strategist that is going to help me. And then I think the second thing I would say is for those who are just starting out on this financial journey, there's a a little bit of like this um, fear. I'm going to bring fear up into both of these of, you know, I don't really, I'm not really an investor. Like like, let's say I'm an an e-quadrant, I'm an employee somewhere, but I love this idea of financial freedom the true way to financial freedom includes the right side of the equation, the, 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 the quadrant, right? I have to start thinking either in building a business or in being an investor of some sort to get to financial freedom. It's not an option, right? So come to grips. Like you cannot, uh, if you're trying to save money on taxes, you cannot disregard the right side of that equation. It doesn't, it does not exist. What about though, the typical advice you would hear from an accountant per se is I want to save taxes. Okay. Go buy a new car, go buy a new piece of equipment. Don't get me started on that. Do do not Russ. That is just, that is a, okay. By the way, if that is the extent of the advice that you're getting from your tax professional, that is a bad situation to be in. Because guess how many people make bad decisions because they have excess cash sitting in the retained earnings and their only advice at the end of the year is you just need to go buy something. Yeah. People will overbuy. They'll buy something that they don't need just to save money on taxes. Like this is, this is not moving you forward in financial freedom. So again, another indicator to, to, to check on the person that you're entrusting to give you advice in this area. I heard Absolutely. an amen over there, Ern. I just, I just want to reiterate that. The, the idea of I have to spend everything that comes in in my business. Well, it's just somebody told me recently, a business owner, um, I, I go to my wife and I ask her, what is the absolute minimum I can give our family? Yikes. Anybody who's been following Wealth of that Wall Street that's, that's not, that's not the vision. <laughs> right. That's not a, her only decision. That's not good leadership in the family. I understand what he's trying to do so that he can go expense it all in the business. But we know what he's doing is he's, he's not spending those dollars wisely in the business. He's just finding things to pour back into the business. And at the end of the day, it, it may not, I don't know for sure, may not, probably not generating revenue worth the expense of the dollars for the business. And at the end of the day, it's not providing his family the whole reason he created that business. Uh, so, so good. I, one of our speakers next, next week when we're in Austin, he was sending the kind of his 
video, you know, to express his excitement of being there to all the guests who's coming. We just sent it out. And he said, whenever I first started this process of becoming a better investor, I was making a lot of money. He said, I paid over half a million in taxes. He said, since I've started seeking out opportunities to be in that I quadrant, someone who is trying to seek 0% in taxes on as many deals as I could be in, but putting money in my pocket, not only have I cut my taxes down where I pay somewhere between 13 and 15% annually, he said, my income, my net income to me is more than 10x from the date that I was when I was paying half a million dollars in taxes annually. I think to all of these points that we need to realize that there's people to pay. So don't try to save money by, by getting tax advice. Don't uh, take it, advice off this podcast or, or any, you know, simple seminar that you go to and assume that it applies directly to you. Be willing to spend money. Don't, don't feel like sticking to the exact plan that you had from the very beginning when you first started is the plan that you have to stick to because as you evolve and you change, so should the planning. To your point, Earn, that we should not necessarily always stick with the advisors that we had initially, unless they have people that are equal to and greater than what we're doing, right? So that way we're, we're learning from that wisdom. And we should not be just thinking for ways to spend money in our business that not just for the purpose of reducing our tax bracket alone. Man, amazing points. There's so many gold nuggets in here. I'm, I'm praying that you, you wrote down a few of these and you're figuring out how can you go seek more information on this information so that you can figure out which ones to apply to you so that you can keep more of the money that you make. So it's all about earn more, keep more, right? And financial freedom is when our passive income is greater than our monthly expenses. And one of our greatest expenses, as you said, Mark, at the very beginning is our taxes or can be our taxes. Let's find ways to legally reduce that as much as possible while increasing our income. As always, we appreciate you listening to the show. Hope that you had an amazing episode. I pray that you'll share this with someone who else will get value from it. Take time, rate, review it. We always love hearing from you whenever you do that. Have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.